Philip Clark here. I am uh, at Wizard World Los Angeles with uh, creator, artist extraordinaire Rafael Navarro, who is the creator of uh, Sonambulo. Yes, correct. Is that correct? And also the uh, artist on the Mac Afro One Shot. Yes, indeed. So, how's the show treating you, Rafael? The show is actually pretty decent for uh, a Sunday, I suppose. Uh, mo most fun I always get is just fans in general. Um, whether it be drawing or, or just 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 coming, giving the support, man, for the, for, for the cause. You know, the independent comic publisher out there. So that's fantastic. Yeah, no, How long have you been drawing? I have been drawing, I don't know, about maybe 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, you mean as a lifetime? God, well, I've been drawing since I was a kid, of course. Professionally, I've been working in the animation and comic book field for about 15 years now. Uh, animation, I think about 11 years now. So yeah, I've been drawing for quite a while. Do you have any formal training? Formal training, yes. Various places and various areas of, of, of lineage. I've gone through three colleges, four colleges, graduated, none of them. So I call that era, Phil, the uh, the Bruce Wayne time of my life. I just going from place to place, picking up uh, uh, traits and, and techniques, and then later on fighting crime at night with them. So, yeah. Very nice. Who would you say your uh, primary influence is? Why you, of course. <laughs> uh, but next to you, uh, I'd say um, I have. Uh, if I want to round it off to just three or four people, I I I'd hate to round it off. It's like asking who's your favorite, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? You know, do you love mom or dad the most? Uh, but um, at the first top three people that, fought, that run through my head is obviously Kirby Toth and Frank Robbins and Gene Colan. Um, a lot of the old guys, um, I, I love uh, 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 Noel Sickles, 1940s artist, and I dig uh, people like, uh, um, um, oh gosh, uh, well Frank, Rob uh, uh, Frank Robbins is huge, biggest influences with Milton Cannon. So basically guys that used to actually work with brushes. Wow. Not this like computer generated hoobar that comes out these days. We're talking about like seasonal, you know, men who did these things for, for, for basically two cents a page and because of that there was more of an abundance of work happening at the time. And then there's being late because I'm trying to do some movie script much more important than trying to make my deadline for my Hulk versus Wolverine comic. No, we're talking about real guys that, that did real work. But yes, no, actually I like new comics too. I'm not that bitter. So you are you are a full time artist now, right? I am. But it wasn't always like that. Oh no. Uh, 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 most artists, uh, uh, like anybody in this field, I mean, you 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 always tend to run into these dry spells. Of course, be prepared for that. As a freelancer, both in animation and comics, um, the first order of the rule of the day is: while you're literally, you know, reaping the, ben the benefits of your current employer, always be prepared. Okay, know exactly when that thing is going to end, and I'd say without question, weeks, months, possibly, have whatever you're going to have prepared to do, literally, so you won't have any dry spells. Right. I, I always line up three, four, five assignments all at the same time, and I always go for the one that gives me the best offer or is just convenient for me in many ways. But always make sure you always have something to fall back on in case something just doesn't work out. It's just professional sense to do that. Which I was going to ask you, what other interesting day gigs have you had outside of your art that paid the bills? Oh, gosh. Well, uh, there was that thing I had to do, but I had to wear a school grill outfit, but I had to shave my legs on a regular basis, so it just never worked out, so I had to stop that. Oh, uh, and, and, but something even just as devilish. Uh, uh, I, I've worked at Nickelodeon, <laughs> and uh, I, I always slum at uh, Warner Animation working on something, whether it be uh, Mucha Lucha or, or now currently the, the Batman animated series that right. is out. Uh, what advice would you give to aspiring artists that want to get into the comic book field? The comic book field, be prepared for just, just everything and anything that will throw at you. The, the, the most important thing you'd always do is, is, is never, ever, ever give themselves an the, the editors, that is, an opportunity to critique your work in a negative way. Basically, you know what you have to do. Look at your weaknesses and your strengths, okay? And then the, the ultimate goal is to try to re grab those weaknesses and try to bring them up to the level up to your strengths, okay? If your strengths are, you know, big superheroes and, 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 and fight sequences, okay. Now try to draw the most academic, most, you know, banal uh, uh, pedestrian sequences just as, as, as convincing, if not as exciting as the stuff you do. You know, always be the well-rounded artist and um, and even though you love the people that you love try to find your own vision one way or another you know it'll come you have your influences without question but you always must always definitely have to find your own identity and most importantly just be prepared for anything whether it be self, your own personal self-doubt or just uh, critique from people always know the difference between say uh, um, bad criticism and, and constructive criticism okay because you're going to get be getting both build that nice thick skin okay because there'll be plenty of that 
and then some as you proceed further. Absolutely. What what keeps you in the game? Why why do you do comics? Love. It's it's my first love. I always go back to comics. Um, as I was saying, I, I work for television, but at the same time, I I feel this need, this loving urge to always go back to to the, to the comic page panel. Nice six page six panel sequence thing. You know, beginning, a middle, and ending. I've always loved that. Animation is very similar to that. At least storyboards. It's the same thing. It's just you're just delving with different forms of time. If, uh, comics like animation, you, you, you deal with time in just different forms. Uh, one a little bit more complex, the other one it's just isolated. Actually, they're both isolated moments of time. It's just comics, you have to pick the most, the best representation of that particular time frame. You know, you try to tell a story with a lot less frames as opposed to animation, you're literally trying to capture an entire environment. Is that what, is that what determines your, your frame layout to in a page? Because I've been asking the artists this, I don't get to ask the writers this a lot, but as far as how you lay out your pages, what, what determines that in your mind? Me, it's always just foreground versus background. The more clearer the story, the better. Um, what tires me constantly in this industry is that people always go for the most simplistic, no, not simplistic, the most inane, typically pin-up looking sequence of just, you know, close-ups and, 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 you and know, straight on shots. Straight on shots. I mean, I want, uh, what saddens me a lot more people these days is tend to forget you have to tell a story. You need an establishing shot. What where are we? What 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 is what environment are you surrounded with? And then at the same time, tell your story. Cut it closer to a medium shot for to see who these people are. What what is you know their their gimmick aside from whatever they're wearing? And then you cut the close-ups for, for for emotional reaction. Every page should not be an extreme close-up. I mean, give me a variety. I I, I need content and, uh, yes. and and I I. Unfortunately, don't see that as often as I used to uh, in the olden days when people actually were trying to tell stories and content. But don't get me wrong, I, I'm beginning to see it again and, and I'm glad that things are coming in a full circle. It's just, give me a story that I like to believe in. I, uh, Convince me of the world that you created, and, and I'll be there. I'll be there loyally, picking up every issue after that. If more people want to get uh, hip to what you're doing, if they need to know more about Rafael Navarro, where can we find you online? Oh, the local Bowery, too, would be great. I'll uh, be holding a uh, Oh, you mean, oh, uh, professionally speaking, okay. Well, uh, try um, so www.sonambulo.com, and uh, yeah, you can get all the funny ditties there, and I think there's an extension to my cheesy MySpace page as well. There. Excellent. Excellent. Or just ask Phil's lawyer who will be suing me shortly. <laughs> there you go. Cool, Rafi. Thank you, man. You're welcome, sir.